Welcome to the second hour of the Time Machine. This is your boy Jay Mace on WUAG 103.1 FM. Playing the best in the old school hip hop, R&B, and everything else in between. That was the Winans with a friend off the 1990 album Return. That song charted on Billboard Hip Hop and R&B Top 40 back on August 11, 1990. Highest position was number 11, stayed in the top 40 for nine weeks. But with me on the phone right now, I have Marcus Thompson, member of the group Timex Social Club. Marcus, welcome to the Time Machine, my man. Hey, 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 how you doing? I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this interview, and I'm good, by the way. Oh, man, not a problem. All right, now let's go ahead and um, get this started now. When did you first come across the art of DJing? What made you want to get involved in that? Um, myself, it was. It, it kind of started with um, a record by Malcolm McLaren um, called Buffalo Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, me and a partner of mine, Gregory Thomas, we, I remember we bought two copies of that record, and we sit up in his room, and we just <laughs> we just scratch and scratch and scratch uh, that record. So that uh, that really got me started in DJing right there. Mm -hmm. That one record, yeah, classic hip hop track, along with the world famous Supreme Team. They had a show on WHBI. Hey DJ, that's where Mariah Carey got the Honey sample from. Uh huh. Yep, you're right. All right. So tell me what was going on on the West Coast before Time X, because it seemed like at that time. Time, East Coast was pretty much ruling, kind of West Coast was kind of like bubbling under the surface. Uh, you want to know what was going on like like amongst us? Well, amongst West Coast in general. West Coast. Uh, we were really into hip-hop at that time, a rap. Um, everything kind of culminated around 1981. Um, you had tracks coming out of New York. Um, and, and the L.A. gangster rap scene was not quite there yet, so we were all just grooving to anything that was coming out of um, New York. So tell me, how did Time at Social Club form? And Time at Social Club formed um, at Berkeley High School. We had a group of friends, uh, including myself, uh, Greg Thomas, Darian Cleege, Craig Samuel, and then Michael Marshall. Uh, we used to hang out together. We were friends at school, friends away from school. And I know you remember this. Prince uh, did a spinoff group called The Time, mm -hmm. uh, fronted by Morris Day. Uh, we, I know me and myself and, and Darian, uh, we liked that group so much that we wanted to be like them, I guess, emulate them. Instead of being the time, because, you know, that was already taken, uh, we said we, we'll be Time X. So we walked around our high school under that name as just, you know, just being this club or group of guys on campus, and that was how we were identified. So we, it wasn't really music in the beginning. It was just a way or an identity around school to just, you know, be noticed. Mm, wow, I didn't know that, because I was thinking if you guys named probably had a correlation with the Timex X Y. That's what I was thinking. No, not at all. It just so happened that the time was already taken and we wanted to emulate that group or, you know, kind of had that swagger, if you will. And so Time X was just the next big name that was identifiable and, and kind of, you know, something out there to grab. So, you know... Time X. And you mentioned that you guys were out of Berkeley, California. Now, what was the difference of being in Berkeley as opposed to like South Central Los Angeles and some of the other hubbubs of California? Wow. Um, a lot of people may not know the geography of California, but uh, the Bay Area is approximately five and a half to six hours away in a car from L.A. or to Southern California. So there's a different culture, there's a different lifestyle. And what I, when we were on tour, people would just say, oh, you guys are from California, you must be from L.A. And we're like, no, you know, read a map. <laughs> Come on, man, it's, it's, it's a whole different scene in Oakland, San Francisco, Berkeley, you know, of Northern California. So the correlation between the two has always been mixed up. But yeah, we're, we're totally, uh, we didn't do the, the Jerry Curl thing. That was more LA. <laughs> Uh, we ha we had the uh, short haircuts of Louisville's, if you will. Yeah, and that was back in the days when Too Short was doing his underground thing. Oh, man, yes, sir, Too Short. I remember Todd Shaw. went to school with him, so, yeah, big ups to Todd Shaw. Yeah, Born to Matt, classic album, and, of course, Freaky Tales, everybody was bumping that in their cars because of the bass. Well, you know, that, that was, he was really responsible for, uh, I would say, the Northern California hip-hop movement and bringing independent labels onto the forefront. I mean, that brother and a few other rappers like E-40 back in the day, they used to basically get on, what we, you know, our public transit, AC Transit, and sell their tapes 
cassette tape on the bus. They would just ride around all day, you know, and and wait till school got out. And, you know, here comes a group of kids, and they would actually sell the tapes on the bus. Talk about getting your hustle on. So it was it was really, you know, a, a street marketing level of grassroots back then in the early 80s with uh, these independent labels and just anybody that wanted to get out and be heard. That, that was a struggle for them, yeah. And then we all know Hammer did the same thing before Capital came in. Yeah, man, I met Hammer before he got his deal with Capital, and that brother was grinding. Um, we did a track in my home studio together. Uh, I saw him out at a couple of other events. I mean, he was, he was performing, you know, on the drop of a dime. He was... Uh, dancing. Uh, I remember the first time I met him, he was in a group called the Holy Ghost Boys. And we were on the Run DMC tour at that time. We were doing a radio uh, spot over at a station in San Francisco called KPOO, a community-based radio station. Well, as you can imagine, by the time we got off the air, there was a crowd of people outside the station because they knew we were actually in the station. Well, Hammer and another guy, I'm not sure, I can't remember his name, but they introduced themselves to me, and he just said, man, my name is Kurt. Um, I got this group called the Holy Ghost Boys, and we are we are bad, man. Give us a call. And he, he slid me his card, and the next thing I know, it was an MC Hammer everywhere, man. Now, tell me, what was it like? Okay, Time X is just getting together, and you guys are performing, and then you guys got your deal. No, that wasn't how it went at all. Um, I like to say we were one of the luckiest groups in the history of music. <laughs> Go ahead and set the story straight. Yeah, uh, this is how it started. We got together, like I said, in high school, but uh, that was 1982, 1983. So the music really didn't happen until 84. Uh, we started writing songs with uh, myself, uh, Michael Marshall, and Alex Hill. That was a close-knit group right there. And we were just a group of friends trying to write some material. We weren't really, and we hadn't really talked talked about performing it as a group. We didn't have a group name at that time. We were just writers. We were just, you know, gambling, huffing it. We were just, uh, you know, trying to just write some material and maybe somebody would hear it and perform it. So this is what happened. We put together a demo, and that demo came around 1985. Um... And it was just something we played in our cars. We played to friends, parents, relatives, and everybody would just, you know, say, hey, you guys are good. You know, keep keep doing your thing. And my brother, Daryl, came down from Alaska, Anchorage, where he was living, and he moved to Oakland. I gave him a tape just to say, hey, bruh, <laughs> it's my demo, you know, not thinking anything. He called me and said, hey, I know a guy. Uh, his name is Jay, and he's starting a label, and I'm going to give him your tape. And I said, okay, and I hung up the phone. Uh, four or five days later, my phone rang. It was Jay King from Club Nouveau. He said, hey, man, I love your song Rumors. I listened to it on your demo tape, and we should talk. And literally a week after that, we were in the studio recording that track. Now... <laughs> On the recording session, imagine this. You're walking to the recording studio, and they're asking you, what name do you want to put on the tape, the two-inch tape master the box? Because there's a there's a title for artists. I literally turned to Michael and Alex, and out came Timex Social Club. But before that, we hadn't been Timex Social Club. So the name was actually born from me on that session, and that's what you hear, and that's what went down. We became a group from that day, and Michael's vocal went on that track and the track just caught fire man and I'm so blessed I'm so grateful to everybody that's have loved that song still loves that song and and they grew to it as we're talking today mm -hmm. it hit number eight on Billboard's Hot 100 back on August the 30th 1986 went number 13 in UK and it was number one on the dance charts for three weeks yes sir that was US dance charts number one that record just a little factoid when we hit in Madison Square Garden in New York on the Run DMC tour, that's when that Billboard magazine issue had hit. Somebody ran up to our hotel room and said, you guys are number one this week. Did you know that? And we said, no. Well, well, let me see. Let me see. And right there in Billboard, man, it had us number one, and you get the circle when you have a bullet. You know, number one with a bullet. And, man, we could have cried, man. That was the... <sighs> That was like the pinnacle. And to walk out on that stage at Madison Square Garden and see 30,000 plus people and know that we were number one and they helped make that, man, it was just, it was awesome. Mm, and tell me about Thinking About You, which was the follow-up single. And then I first heard it, and I told told you this in a previous conversation, when Master P sampled it. 